Well, he helped shape America's economic policies for decades. He was one of the best known and most influential economists ever, and now he is gone. But Milton Friedman leaves quite a legacy, one that will last for decades. Michelle Caruso Cabrera on The Money Tonight. Milton Friedman was an ardent defender of the free markets and a watchdog against out-of-control government spending. I am strongly opposed to any retreat on the subject of taxes. I think raising taxes will not in fact reduce the deficit, it will simply increase spending. His ideas would become the backbone of the Reagan revolution. But it was work done decades earlier that won Friedman the Nobel Prize in economics in 1976. He was the first to say that what the Federal Reserve does matters, and matters a lot. He turned conventional economic thinking on its head when he argued the central bank was responsible for the Great Depression by keeping the money supply too tight. In a speech some 50 years later, Ben Bernanke, now chief of the Federal Reserve, wrote, I would like to say to Milton regarding the Great Depression, you're right. We did it. We're very sorry. But thanks to you, we won't do it again. I think in the latter part of his life, he shifted to targets on inflation, which is, of course, where many, if not most, of the central banks of the world are focused and have been for some long time. It was his ability to explain economic theory in a simple way, which made him a familiar figure on the national stage. And he produced numerous books, a longtime column for Newsweek, and a series on PBS. Friedman firmly believed capitalism and democracy were inextricably linked and early on predicted the failure of the Soviet Union. In an interview four years ago when he was 90, he was just as passionate about his belief in the supremacy of the free markets over government regulation. Except for you and CNBC and the like, the free market doesn't have a public relations mechanism. It doesn't have uh, public defenders, as it were. The government always has a public defender. It has a straight access to the media. He was not without controversy. His Nobel ceremony in Stockholm prompted a large turnout of demonstrators who criticized Friedman for giving economic advice to the then dictator of Chile, Augusto Pinochet. In his later years, he and his wife Rose dedicated themselves to education reform through the use of school vouchers, what they saw as a method to bring the free markets to the public school system. And he believed, of course, that parents' freedom to choose is the most important thing that they could have for their children. His longtime friend and collaborator, Anna Schwartz, said this today. It's a tremendous loss that he's gone. But as I say, I think what he stood for will live for a long time. In that sense, he's not gone. Milton Friedman was 94. On the Money, Michelle Caruso Cabrera, CNBC.